Hello and welcome back. Today's going to be a pretty simple video. We're just going to be going over how to randomly change the color of an object uh, based off a color pool so that it's not true random. Like we're not just going to go and get a color out of the full color space. We're going to be getting a random color out of an array of colors we've made so that we know that the colors that we are selecting are always going to work for the purpose. Um, I can give you a quick example. So this game over here is one I made for a game jam. Uh, this is just a tutorial level. But if I press R, you'll see it cycles through the colors. And the colors change, but it always makes it so that the player is visible from the foreground, and the foreground is visible uh, to the background. So, yeah. Let's get started with that. To begin with, we're just going to open up Unity. And we'll start off just by creating a script, a C sharp script, and um, we'll just call this random color. Um, I'm going to write it the Australian way. You can write it however. Um, yeah, and then in the scene, we're going to need some objects to change. So we'll add in a sprite. We need to give this sprite an actual sprite. Well, we need to give this sprite object an actual sprite image. So we do that, and then we'll create a 3D sphere. And then just to make our sprite the same size as a sphere, we'll just scale this up to 5.5, just so they look nice. Um, yeah, cool. So now we have both of them. Maybe I'll add a background as well just to show the standing out thing. So I'm just going to duplicate that, rename this one to background, and then move its layer order to like minus two, and then physically move it, because the layer order is only going to work for the sprites. It's not going to work for the 3D object. And then we'll just scale this one up to like 50. Nope, even bigger. So let's go like 500. You could do this without a sprite in the background. I'm just putting a sprite in the background because it's a quick, easy way to do it. Um, but yeah, so now we have our sprite to range the uh, birds. I'm going to shut the window. Okay, so now we have our sprite, which we're going to be able to randomly change the color of. And we have our 3D object, which we're randomly going to change the color of. We're going to need to add a light because the 3D object needs a lighting system. So. Oops, yeah, create light, directional light, and we'll just move that out of the way. Cool. Um, so yeah, let's jump into our script. Should have loaded Visual Studio beforehand. Okay, so as always, I'm just going to move these brackets down because I prefer them like that. And now we're going to need to start declaring some stuff. So we're going to need to have a public color, uh, but it's going to be an array of colors. So we just add our brackets and we'll call this our color bank. Uh, we're going to need a, yeah, do we want them now? Yeah, we'll just do them now. We're going to need a public bool. We'll just call it mesh. And we're going to need another public bool and call it sprite. Just because we're going to need to use different code to change a mesh and to change a sprite. Uh, that's the reason why I put a mesh and sprite in the scene. So you can see how to do this for 3D or for 2D. Um, but yeah, seeing we're going to have a script on each object, and only one of them is going to have a sprite, and only one of them is going to have a mesh. We're going to have to have the ball to check if it's got a sprite or if it's got a mesh, just to make sure that we're not running code, which is just going to throw an error. So, yeah, cool. So now all we need to do is we make an int, and we call this one our number, and it's going to be equal to a random dot range. So we're getting, whoops, random dot range. And so that just basically means we need to get something. We're going to grab a random number between our range. And our range is just going to be from 0 to the length of our color bank. So we just go color bank, 
dot length. Cool. So yeah, like I said, we have whoops, that's meant to be num. We have an int called num, which is just equal to a random number between zero and how many colors we have in our color bank. That's very simple. All this is really simple. Um, but yeah, so now we'll put in our balls if mesh. So if mesh equals true, do this. If bool equals true, of course we could just do an else statement, um, but this just makes it a little bit nicer for the uh, inspector because if we used an else, which would make the code a little bit like cleaner, we would in the inspector just be choosing if it's like a sprite. Would only would only have one bool basically, and it would be saying sprite, or it'd be saying mesh, and which you'd either click it on for mesh, and if it was off, it would be a sprite which like it works fine but it doesn't really work that well for a designer's brain so instead what we're doing is let's just move this script under our background once it's loaded so yeah instead we just have mesh and sprite because it's just easier for you to know what you're doing cool so now we actually need to do the code so we need to get a mesh renderer for this one so we're getting a mesh render, we're going to call it M, and it's going to be equal to a get component of type mesh renderer. And all we want to do with this is go M, which is our mesh renderer. Then we want to get our material, so material, then it's color. And we're just going to set that equal to be our color from our color bank with our random like, position that we came up before, so num. So basically all that's saying, hmm, why are you throwing an error? Because oh. that needs a capital. Cool, okay, yeah, so all we're doing is that we have a random int that is from zero and how many colors we have, then we're getting our mesh renderer, and then we're getting the material on our mesh renderer, we're changing its color to be whichever random position we grabbed out of the color bank. And for the sprite, it's basically the same thing, but we're going to grab our sprite renderer. So, yeah. And we're just going to call that S. And that's going to be equal to get component. And obviously, this time, we're going to be getting our sprite renderer. And then we just need to go s dot color equals. This is the only part where this part changes a little bit. Color bank. Cool. So yeah, with the um, 3D object, we have to actually get the mesh renderer. And we need to get its material and change its color. But with the sprite renderer, we can just get the sprite renderer and get straight access to its color and set it from there. So this one is obviously only going to set on start. So let's come back into Unity. We still need to define our color banks and stuff as well. So we will grab our script, we'll put it on our sphere, and we'll put it on our little sprite over here. And now let's come over here, and this one's a sprite, this background is a sprite, and this one here is a mesh. And now we need to set the colors. So for the background, we'll just move the background so it's a little bit not as confusing. Um, yeah, so let's just say three colors for the background. We'll make it just blue, green, and red. Keep it simple. Then for our foreground objects, we'll also, whoops, for our foreground objects, we'll also give them three colors. But instead, let's go like yellow, orange, and pink. And then instead of just having to do this again on the um, 3D object, we're just going to come over to here, copy our component, come over to here, and paste its values. 
but now of course we pasted that it's a sprite so change that back to mesh and now if we press play we get random colors um, but that happened in the start so let's just move all of this into update so that we can cycle through it so just put that down there actually let's do that in a second let's add our if statement first so if input dot uh, get key down then we want to get our key code um, what button let's just do R paste that code in there so now whenever we push R we're going to run this code press play should have put my phone on silent but yeah so now when we press R we will cycle through our colors because we have three obviously it's not going to change every time because it's a very low amount of colors but yeah there we go random cycling through a color well a color bank so like I said if we wanted to do true random we'd just be going from the whole color space but we're doing it this way so we can actually design around uh, the needs of the game and make it so that everything actually works color wise because obviously we don't want to have two things the same color if they're meant to stand out from each other uh, yeah so I hope that was helpful um, yeah if there's anything else you'd like to see leave a comment down below uh, always like the video that helps a lot and yeah I really need some more subscribers. <laughs> um, I need to get to a thousand subscribers to be able to monetize my channel again. So yeah, that'd be cool. Have a nice day.